kidney disease while on steroids. This is a great case. I see this very commonly over the years. And in this case, I'm going to bring you through a classic case of a man that's come to me. And of course, I've changed all the demographics. I've switched things around. So this really is not going to implicate who the man is at all. And if the man is watching, thank you so much. And this is really more of a compilation of many men that I see because the presentation is very similar. So, a man comes to me who's 36 years old. His chief complaint is that he's been using anabolic steroids for approximately 10 years uh, and his, uh, himself and his family are very concerned and he feels tired and he has a poor libido. He's currently on steroids. The history of present illness is that this is a 36 year old man with a history of heavy to moderate blasting and cruising anabolic steroids, which I see so commonly for years, 10 years straight. He comes to me currently on a pretty high dose of testosterone we'll get into and uh, utilizing some secondary Anovar uh, days he works out. And he's very concerned for his recent medical issues. So his current medical history and his past medical history is significant for multiple episodes of heat stroke and as they call it with his doctor's rhabdomyolysis, multiple episodes over the last few years. He has identified lower urinary tract symptoms that have led to a diagnosis of a urethral stricture. And he's been uh, currently worked up in the past year or so with urology experts. And it's interesting that he has two plus protein on a basic urinalysis and the urologist uh, has not identified this. He has a poor lipid panel currently under my investigation with an LDL of 124 milligrams per deciliter. HDL is low at 20 milligrams per deciliter. BUN 16 milligrams per deciliter. Creatinine 1.39 milligrams per deciliter. AST, these are liver enzymes, 65 international units per liter. ALT 67. Total testosterone 664, free 28.4. Luteinizing hormone and focal stimulating hormone are too low to appreciate and to measure. Ultra sensitive estradiol, too low to appreciate and measure on laboratory analysis. Sex hormone binding globulin, 13 nanomoles per liter, that's low. He has a history of hypertension. He's approximately 5'9". He weighs about 225 pounds. His blood pressure on vital signs is consistently 140s over mid 90s. His current medical regimen includes testosterone cypionate, 400 milligrams per mil concentration, which is interesting, guys. Can you really pack in 400 milligrams in one milliliter of any dissolvent oil? That's always a question I have. He's taking 0 0.8 milliliters intermuscularly injected every other day. He's on Anovar, 60 to 80 milligrams orally on training days, which turns out to be about three or four days a week. He also takes a Nostrazole, one milligram tablet every other day for years. He also takes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, some of them heavy, which is Mobic, which is prescription, as needed, again, several times a week, sometimes very high doses, exceeding the recommended dose by the physician. He has no known drug allergies. Family history significant for hypertension and diabetes on both mother and father. His social history, he's a construction worker and he works in the heat. Arduous jobs year after year working in the heat somewhere in the southeast of the United States.
review of systems. He's more tired than usual <clears throat> in addition to the history of present illness and the chief complaint in the last four to six months, which spurned on the evaluation and the need, desire to come see me. He has a poor sexual desire, erectile dysfunction, despite having elevated free testosterone levels and blasting and cruising on testosterone and steroids for many years. He's kind of losing the effect in his sexual function. It's funny enough that that's on his perspective of why he seeks medical care and his family uh, seeks overall medical care due to the concern for other issues that we're addressing here. So the analysis and plan is a 36 year old man with a history of chronic, moderate, heavy anabolic steroid use now presents with symptoms consistent malaise and fatigue, poor sexual experience, classic abnormalities on labs, an active anabolic steroid regimen, including intramuscular testosterone and PO anovar use with PO use of aromatase inhibitors, both overdosed. There was an unawareness of the proteinuria by the expert physician that I think did a great job, but those are surgical urologists. So you have to work, understand that these doctors have to work in a team. But he had a workup and he has a diagnosis, urethral strictures with lower urinary tract symptoms and he's being worked up with surgical urology for that. The management plan at this point, and remember, this is a patient that just recently came in, so we're under workup right now. I wanna bring this to attention because I see it so often. I told him to stop the oral anabolic steroid supplementation, stop the aromatase inhibitor, and I changed him to a more pharmacologic dose of testosterone ester, testosterone sipinate, 200 milligrams per mil concentration, 0.5, uh, milliliters intermuscle injected every four days. And this is for, so he doesn't suffer and withdraw. He's guaranteed to have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And just to stop outright the steroids would be criminal. And there would be, lead to significant suffering after 10 years of steroid use. His natural production, his brain and his testicles, the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis is guaranteed to be decimated and will probably never come back. I am very fortunate that I have connections in the world with some of the best urologists and nephrologists in the world. So I called up an expert nephrologist and I have a recommendation for a specific nephrologist just in his area. The concern is for early kidney disease. The type of kidney disease is classic. It's focal, segmental, glomerular sclerosis. We have to look at that. We have to see what an expert nephrologist that's aware of this disease is gonna do, we're gonna to work together. Control blood pressure. Have to control blood pressure. I wanna see what agents, but I'm aware of what agents they're gonna come up with from the nephrologist, but I'm an internist. I have to rely on an expert. We work together. That's what I do for these guys. Lose body weight, lower protein intake, so controversial and generates so much controversy and even anger from some of you guys out there with me. Lowering the protein and the protein doesn't lead to any kidney disease. Well, that's not true in this case at all because this man has significant uh, proteinuria. So, I would recommend 1.8 grams per kilogram body weight. He has to stop the NSAIDs. We have to counsel him on anabolic steroid use and abuse and anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism and that he should not withdraw. But I also wanna to talk to him about biodysmorphia because he has that. He's been enjoying incredibly muscular physique and blessed with that for many, many years. And that's been part of his persona and he's incorporated that into his life, into his being and his spirit. So we have to understand that. We can't just diminish that. So I will be referring him for cognitive behavioral therapy on that regard. So I really hope this helps, guys. This is such a classic case, so classic, that I see it so often that a man comes in early, in this case, 
His renal function, serum renal function, is probably gonna be okay. He's very muscular, and that creatinine is probably gonna be normal for his muscularity. I have to see a nephrologist on this. But the proteinuria, the two plus proteinuria in his urine has to be really looked at carefully because what I'm seeing is before you see failure and kidney disease in the blood and the serum with the creatinine clearance, you're gonna see all this proteinuria. And I've discussed this with expert nephrology doctors that are pathologists, even at Cleveland Clinic. So Dr. Leo Hurlitz, thank you so much. With this said, we are definitely going to be able to avoid catastrophe and him going into dialysis, hopefully. Hopefully he'll never have to consider that. But without this type of vigilance and management and love and care and guidance and management with other experts that will not discriminate on this man, the doctors I work with will be not discriminating upon this man for what he's done. They'll be helping heal this man. Certainly, I hope this man will be in a better place, and I hope all of you can review this, understand this, and make sure you're very healthy early. And if you're using steroids, you have to get management. You have to be observant to the potential for disease on the kidney and the heart and on other systems. I really hope this helps everyone. Thank you so much, guys.